Three Worst Generation members set out from Wano, riding the high of victory after having overcome the Yonko, each of them carrying three billion berry bounties. Then, one by one, they were crushed by the remaining forces of the New World. First, Eustace Kid, defeated by red-haired Shanks, his crew supposedly permanently eradicated. Then, Trafalgar Law, defeated by Blackbeard, the Heart Pirate's fate left unknown. And finally, we have Straw Hat Luffy, whose fate seems to hang in the balance, as the world government has thrown every ounce of military force they have available at his tiny crew barricaded up in Egghead Island. And despite all that, I don't believe this is the time for Luffy and his crew to suffer the same fate as their contemporaries, the Kid Pirates and the Heart Pirates. I don't think this is Sabote 2.0, nor do I think this is just a moment of failure that each of the three supernova rivals are meant to face. Rather, I think all signs are pointing to the Egghead Island arc in general actually being about proving Luffy's status as Yonko. And beyond that, as the first arc in the final saga, I believe Egghead's broader narrative purpose is proving the strength of each of the Yonko individually before they all break out into war over the One Piece. So let's take a look at how all the pieces are coming together to set up the Egghead arc as a Yonko showcase of sorts, and potentially the first great victory by Yonko Luffy. But before we get into it, make sure to subscribe. And I need to know, are you sometimes frustrated by not being able to find certain shows or movies on streaming services? If so, you should use Surfshark VPN, the sponsor for this video. If you're not already using a VPN, you are way behind. A VPN is the absolute best way to travel the globe virtually, so you can get access to all sorts of foreign shows, anime, and movies by just changing your location online. Not to mention sports streaming. As a tennis fan, I used to miss out on watching free streaming streaming of certain majors because they weren't available in the US. But with a VPN, I can virtually relocate to Australia to watch the Australian Open for free with a click of a button. Same for football, cricket, or whatever sports you can't get for free in your home country. And most importantly, Surfshark protects your data at the same time. Even if you don't want to virtually travel, you should be using Surfshark VPN because when you turn on Surfshark, all activity that you do online is immediately completely hidden and anonymous. No one knows what you're doing, you leave no data behind, not even Surfshark has any idea what you're you're doing. The best part is, if you want to try Surfshark, you can use code MORGE today to get three extra months free. Surfshark offers a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there is no risk trying it out. Just hit the link in the description below to get three extra months free. So that aside, to begin with, the pattern that people have talked about is the defeat of Kid and Law coming right out of Wano, and so that means that Luffy seems set up for something similar with all these forces approaching Egghead Island. It does certainly seem possible that Oda wanted to follow up that huge victory in Wano by those three supernova by then having them face crushing defeats shortly afterwards. However, I think that this pattern of defeats could easily be reframed with a different pattern depending on how you view Luffy. Because on the one hand, you could say that Luffy is a member of this group, the Supernova Trio. Therefore, what's happening to the others in his group could happen to Luffy next. But I think it's more accurate to say that at this point in the story, Luffy is actually a member of this other group first and foremost, the Yonko. Therefore, we should be looking at how Oda is writing each member of the Yonko so far in the Egghead Island arc to get an idea of where Luffy's story is headed. Because honestly, at this point in the story, that's who Luffy really is. He is a Yonko, he is not just a supernova. Luffy's true rivals at this point are Blackbeard, Shanks, and Crossguild, not Law and Kid. I think it's time we start associating Luffy with the Emperors as one of the Emperors first, rather than one of the remnants of the Sabote supernovas. After all, at the end of the day, despite the fact that Law and Kid were technically given the same bounty as Luffy, we the reader know how absurdly huge the actual gap in accomplishments and strength is between Luffy and them. While Luffy was jumping rope with Kaido, Kid and Law were failing to defeat Big Mom even in a 2v1 and literally had to have 10,000 tons of TNT randomly written into the story to actually knock her out. While Luffy has subordinates that are only rivaled by Shanks' crew, Law has Beppo and Kid has a squad of Usopp's. While Luffy has the nations of Wano, Zo, and Fishman Island under his flag, Kid and Law have literally no friends. While Luffy has an entire grand fleet composed of some of the New World's strongest fighters, Kid and Law barely even have any good fighters in their core crew. While Luffy actually earned three out of the four required road poneglyphs, Kid and Law literally had to get handouts 
from Luffy just to catch up to him. While Luffy is one of the top five greatest hockey masters in the entire world, Kid and Law barely even know what hockey is. So at the end of the day, we the reader know that this quote unquote rivalry between Luffy, Kid, and Law is by far the most forced and absurd dynamic that Oda has ever tried to write into the series, and if anything, Luffy should have several times the bounty that either Kid or Law have. Again, at the end of the day, the true group of pirates that Luffy now belongs with is the Yonko, not the winless wonders Kid and Law. And so I see the pattern of what's been happening in the Egghead arc so far in a very different light. It's not so much that Kid and Law were immediately defeated, it's the fact that Oda seems to be flexing the strength of the Yonko by having them defeat fraudulent contenders like Kid and Law right away. So what has happened so far in the Egghead arc? An overconfident Kid shows up at Shanks' territory and is immediately one-shotted. That's right, the first time Oda had Shanks use an actual named attack was only now, at the start of the final saga, to establish Shanks' strength heading into the final conflict of One Piece. What about Blackbeard? Well, Egghead has also been a showcase for Blackbeard, and particularly his crew. With Blackbeard defeating Law, while at the same time Blackbeard's crew defeated the legendary marine hero, Garp, thereby establishing the threat of the Blackbeard pirates in general to kick off the final saga. Now that the final conflict for Pirate King is about to begin, Oda seems to be showcasing the strength of each of the Yonko and their crews one by one. Similarly, while Cross Guild has yet to do anything on screen, we have been shown that they are the Yonko crew that has been giving the Marines the most trouble so far in this final saga. And their latest chapters seem to set them up to make a major move in the very near future, so their showcase seems to be around the corner as well. And so finally, to round out the Yonko, we have Luffy and the Straw Hat Pirates. Whereas Shanks and Blackbeard got to use protagonists like Kid and Law as their punching bags to hype them up as Yonko, Luffy is the hero of the story, and so of course, he and the Straw Straw Hat's establishing feats as a Yonko crew would come from defeating some antagonists. There's not really any strong pirates lying around for Luffy to defeat right now outside of the other Yonko themselves, but since it's a bit too early for that, Oda seems to be instead throwing the best forces of the world government at the Straw Hat crew instead. As such, from what I can tell, this all seems like an easily set up opportunity for Luffy and the Straw Hat pirates to get their shine as a Yonko crew against the Marines, just as the other Yonko are making waves and pulling off similarly impressive victories across the New World. And in that vein, I think it's particularly important for Luffy and the Straw Hats to get a major victory here, as they are simply the Yonko crew with by far the most to prove right now. Shanks and Blackbeard are already established Yonko. Cross Guild is new, but the main threat of Cross Guild, Mihawk, has been an established and respected legendary pirate for just as long as Shanks at this point. Luffy is the one true newbie, having become a Yonko in the span of just a couple months since he came out into the New World. It feels like this is the moment that Luffy would have to defend his title rather than immediately fail, because right now it feels like he needs to prove his worthiness of that title. For example, coming into Wano, Luffy was being called an Emperor, but it was clear to everyone that he wasn't actually deserving of the title, or that he was on the level of the other emperors. It was too early, which is why Luffy was promptly put in his place, and he was shown that he is not ready yet. However, at this point, that's no longer the case. We have seen how much Luffy has grown. We have seen the great leaps he has taken to truly reach the level of the strongest pirates. And yet, what's happening in the Egghead Island arc so far, he is still being disrespected and doubted, and his status as a Yonko is being questioned by some. It doesn't help that Wano was very specifically and likely deliberately a very isolated island, cut off from the outside world, seemingly set up precisely so that no one would ever know the truth of what happened over the course of that conflict and so the world wouldn't quite know who deserved full credit for the defeat of Kaido. Does the general public even know that ultimately Luffy was the one who pulled it off? Luffy is being referred to as a Yonko, but does the world really know just how strong he is? Considering the world government is trying to split up the credit, and considering Luffy's biggest achievements were in what was essentially a secret war, I think that's why the Egghead arc is being framed the way it is, in the exact opposite setup from Wano. This is not a secret conflict. Rather, it feels like a gigantic spotlight is being cast upon this island and this battle. The newly appointed Yonko, Straw Hat Luffy, openly challenging the world government itself by taking over its single most valuable island, welcoming open warfare with the Marines, who are now sending an armada the size of which has not been seen since Marine Ford in order to go to battle with the Straw Hat crew. 
This is a major public statement moment from Yonko Luffy. Can he openly defy the world government like this? Can he, as a Yonko, challenge the Marines directly and overcome them? Or was Luffy's title given out too callously? Is Luffy being set up to get crushed barely a week after becoming a supposed emperor yet again? I personally don't think that is the case. Though all this does finally bring us to what I find most interesting about this entire scenario, which is the eerie similarities to Sabote. The beats are almost exactly the same. The only thing that differs is the scale and the timing of the story. Sabote was the first arc of the final saga to close out Act 1 of One Piece. Egghead Island is the first arc of the final saga to close out Act 2 of One Piece. In Sabote, Luffy is riding high as a freshly established supernova, one of the 11 greatest pirates of paradise. In Egghead Island, Luffy is riding high as a freshly established Yonko, one of the four greatest pirates of the New World. In Sabote, Luffy commits a great act of defiance against the world government by punching a celestial dragon. In Egghead Island, Luffy commits a great act of defiance against the world government by taking over the most important government island and stealing away their most valuable asset, Vegapunk. In Sabote, the world government sends Kizaru to punish Luffy. In Egghead, the world government sends Kizaru to punish Luffy. The Sabote battle began with a warm-up of the Straw Hats going up against the Vegapunk invention, the Pacifista. The Egghead battle begins with a warm-up with the Straw Hats going up against the Vegapunk inventions, the Seraphim, which are essentially extremely advanced pacifista. In Sabote, the Straw Hats battles are juxtaposed with the other supernova being defeated. In Egghead, the Straw Hats battles are juxtaposed with the other supernova being defeated. And finally, Sabote climaxes with a fight against overwhelming forces of Kizaru, Sentamaru, and Kuma, while Egghead seems set up to climax with a fight against overwhelming forces of Kizaru, fleets of marines, and Gorosei Saturn. So it seems like everything is set for the same story of defeat to play out once again, right? Well, you could view it that way, or you could view it as Oda setting up such an identical parallel scenario specifically to have the Straw Hats succeed this time where they previously failed. After all, that is growth. That is the entire point of defeat, to come back stronger, wiser, and to be able to return to a similar obstacle that you faced before, but this time come out on top. Because the key difference I see is the timing. Sabote was the first arc of the final saga of Act 1 of One Piece, and Act 1 of One Piece is supposed to end in defeat, at a low point. That entire final saga of Act 1, stretching from Sabote through Marine Ford, was a saga about defeat, of Luffy going through a downward spiral that eventually broke him, and had him questioning his dream of Pirate King. But this saga is the reverse. This is the final saga of Act 2 of One Piece, the closing act. This is a saga that is about victory. This is where Luffy achieves his dreams. That's not to say that the Straw Hats won't lose at all during this final saga. I do believe they will at some point. However, in the very first arc of this saga, Egghead, an arc where the Straw Hats are looking to simply prove their worthiness as a Yonko to get things started, to prove they are final contenders for One Piece, just like Shanks, just like Blackbeard, and even like Buggy, this starting arc seems to make a lot more sense as an early victory to establish themselves before the Straw Hats start going up against the actual challenges and enemies of the saga, such as the Blackbeard Pirates, Akainu, or Imu himself. After all, several things to keep in mind is that, first of all, the squad that the Straw Hats are up against right now, Kizaru, the Seraphim, and one of the Gorosei, these can best be described as a warm-up squad in the grand scheme of things. They're not facing Emu, they're not facing Blackbeard, they're not facing Akainu, they're facing some subordinates and secondary villains that are being thrown at them to get things started. Generally, if the hero is supposed to lose to the villain and then rise back up and defeat them, this tends to actually happen against the main villain of the saga, such as against Crocodile or Luchi or Doflamingo or Kaido. Yes, obviously the Marine Ford saga, Luffy got f***ed up by everyone, from Sentamaru to Kizaru to Magellan to random vice admirals, but again, that was a saga about defeat in general. We're not there anymore. In sagas about victory, as this one is set to be, any major defeat the hero faces will likely come from the primary villains, as that is what establishes a dramatic storyline, to see the hero rise back up and defeat the same villain at the end. Losing to Kizaru or one of Inu's random five subordinates right now seems far too early for Luffy. Again, these seem like hype tools for him, rather than the other way around. On top of this, narratively, Luffy as a brand new Yonko facing defeat so early would throw off other expected upcoming beats of the story, such as Luffy's reunion with Shanks. Think about it. We know that Luffy and Shanks' reunion has been framed as Luffy one day meeting Shanks as an equal, as a great, successful pirate that can see Shanks eye to eye. It would be strange if the Straw Hats are crushed right after being declared a Yonko crew, and then after that defeat, 
In the wake of that defeat, Luffy then meets Shanks after such a drastic failure. Wouldn't that pretty much be the exact same scenario as what happened in Marine Ford, where Shanks specifically said that it would be wrong to meet Luffy right now, with Luffy at such a low point having just failed as a pirate? Shanks has made it clear that he's only interested in meeting Luffy, after Luffy's riding high off of his successes as a pirate. Now all that being said, if Oda is planning a major twist here and actually has the Straw Hats face defeat yet again, mirroring Sabote beat for beat, despite all of their growth and progress, I wouldn't be one to complain. I, of course, love additional stakes and tension in the story. And while I personally believe a major defeat would make much more sense later down the line in the final saga to a more significant and personal opponent, I certainly wouldn't mind Oda throwing us for a loop with an early defeat to some subordinates. However, looking at all the factors of the Egghead narrative so far, with the buildup of the Yonko crews one by one, with the potential for Luffy and the Straw Hats to have a major public establishing victory to cement their status as one of the Yonko to the world before the big battle royale for One Piece begins, and to better set up the upcoming meeting with Luffy and Shanks as equals, and finally for the Straw Hats to succeed where they once failed 500 chapters ago in Sabote, I think a grand, world-shaking victory by the Straw Hat Pirates is in store for us here at Egghead Island. But let me know how you think the Egghead Island climax is going to play out in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this video then definitely like and subscribe. And if you want to hear my thoughts on the Straw Hat Pirate matchups for the Egghead Island battle, you can get that on my weekly podcast by supporting me on Patreon, just hit the link in the description below.